Thank you for supporting the Northwest Highlands Geopark. This presentation was originally given at our visitor centre, The Rock Stop, during Earth Science Week 2016. We were kindly sponsored by the Highland Council, the Quaternary Research Association, the Geological Society of London and the Open University. We were especially grateful to Professor Simon Harley from the University of Edinburgh for volunteering his time to travel north and speak. His presentation is available in podcast form on our website and to Dr Hannah Mathers from the University of Glasgow for running the Earth Science Week workshops for children using our augmented reality sandbox. My name is Laura Hamlet and I'm the Geopark Officer here in the North West Highlands. I've been in this job for three years but still occasionally get asked the question, Geo what? So I like to start all my talks by just addressing this question. Geoparks are set up for communities by communities in areas of our planet that enjoy outstanding geological heritage. It's widely accepted now that the living world and the physical world are inseparable, existing as part of a complex ecosystem that drives the success or failure of human endeavour. And now more than ever, it's increasingly recognised that human activities are having a greater and greater influence on these systems. In August 2016, at the 35th International Geological Congress in Cape Town, South Africa, a working group of scientists unanimously recognised a new epoch in our planet's history, the Anthropocene, meaning the age of humans. This new era is characterised by a change in trajectory for the Earth system of which we're all part, one in which humanity has become so prevalent and powerful that we're now globally affecting the geological record. With this new age comes great responsibility and the recognition that our actions now affect the success or failure of the very systems which have supported us. The success or failure of the fishing, the tourist season, the crofter and so on are in our hands. It is in communities such as ours on the periphery of large population centres, economically sensitive and in touch with our environment, that become the barometers of such actions and are therefore best placed to inform and educate, permeating the message of stewardship through the minds and hearts of everyone that visits us. This was recognised in the 1990s by a group of geologists that coined the term geopark. They saw that through the empowerment of communities like ours, we could become a force for change, optimism and hope. But what is this empowerment? It's a recognition of people and land, telling stories about how the landscape formed and how it supports life and new cultural traditions. It's a celebration of stories and traditions and through these, the willingness to share with visitors to spread the message, we care. This is important to us. This affects our livelihoods, our culture, our sense of place, of home. As Patrick McKeever, the Chief of Section for Earth Sciences and Geohazard Risk Reduction, put it in 2010, we have to rebuild the bridge between our knowledge of the Earth, its history and its landscape and the total dependence of modern society upon Earth's nat natural resources. Geoparks are the people building those bridges. The original instigators of the Geoparks movement approached UNESCO in 1999, as their aims were closely aligned. The backing of UNESCO can lend weight on an international level, and they realised that such a movement required a groundswell approach. Cultural change wasn't going to happen in ivory towers, but at the grassroots. So they supported the establishment of a network contributed a secretariat and waited. And the communities responded. As you can see, there are now more than 120 regions worldwide that have successfully established geoparks. Each community is different and so every geopark is different. Some are especially concerned with natural hazards such as volcanoes or tsunamis while others look to the promotion of the landscape to help establish more local job opportunities or ways of life. Beyond all this, we share a common aim, the hope that by positive education and active social and cultural change, we can build an optimistic future. In recognition of the tremendous achievements of geoparks, the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organisation created in 2015 a new designation on a par with World Heritage Sites, the UNESCO Global Geopark. It's hoped that through this programme, communities will be supported and encouraged to achieve their aims. But what is your geopark? As you can see from this simple geological map, we have an amazing range of rock types here, significant on an international scale. 
The different rocks weather slightly differently and contain slightly different minerals which create a range of interesting landscapes and support incredible biodiversity. Geologists have been coming to our part of the world for the best part of 150 years and telling our stories. The Geopark boundary contains seven community councils. These seven councils all contribute a representative to the Geopark board of directors. Other directors can be co-opted for special skills, but the community always has a majority in any voting. We entered the Global Geoparks Network in 2005. We were the 23rd in the world, but the first in Scotland. The Geopark boundary covers 2,000 square kilometres, and there are 2,000 adults on the electoral roll here. We did some research in 2014, asking the people here what they think the Geopark should be doing. The answer was, be a tourism provider, give our visitors something to do and something for us to get involved with. Everything from adventure activities to heritage events, but also educational programmes for all ages. Tourism interpretation and signage were considered essential, and landscape-based driving, cycling and walking routes were also considered important, along with the establishment of a visitor centre. Perceived factors affecting the growth of tourism were broadly grouped into four topics. The lack of facilities, mostly visitor attractions, accommodation, public transport and places to, to eat and drink, were considered critical, and the cost of fuel and lack of promotion also important. We know that in 2012, 13 and 14, the Geopark area received more than 170,000 visitors per year, and with the establishment of the North Coast 500 driving route, this is likely to have increased by at least 10%. But what we want is for these visitors to be able to stay longer, to have more things to do, to learn more about the place that they're in, and so encourage them to really care about our area. So, we created a visitor centre with a cafe, shop and earth science expedition. Ex exhibition. We've started to install geopods and pebble routes to tell people about the landscape, but also about us, the people that live here. What we do and how we make a living showing people that we care for our region and have roots here. The pebble roots and the geopods work in tandem. They take people off the main road down to the smaller villages and encourage them to spend more time there. We also provide geotours. These have been so successful that we've had to put an extra one on this year to meet demand. One of the main events that we've started is the annual climbing festival, which we're hoping to build into a month-long geoheritage and adventure festival in, in October. We've taken people to the tops of our mountains and to the depths of our knowledge. All of this under the banner, the Northwest Highlands Geopark. We've got this fabulous tagline and we're sorry about the font, we're working on it, but essentially we exist to help everybody to explore deep time, to evoke a sense of place, whether it's because you've come here to wild camp, fish, try our local food or do something really adventurous or just to go for a drive and encourage stewardship of the landscape and the area. In 2016, we started the year at Holyrood with a joint event with Geopark Shetland and the Portuguese National Commission. Here we are. We linked our two countries and demonstrated how Portuguese geoparks contribute up to 50 million euros to their economy each year. We'd like to learn how to do that too. We helped with some path building out at the Bone Caves. We installed a augmented reality sandbox into our exhibition and ran workshops to schools using it, including in Earth Science Week. We continued with our guided walk programme and we even got on the telly. This is us on Channel 4 documentary called Walking Through Time. We attended the Global Geoparks Network Conference and the European Geoparks Network Coordination Committee. Here's the youngest ever delegate. During Earth Science Week, we, we were helped by Kinloch Burvey High School students to make a bus advert advertising Earth Science Week in the Geopark. This ad ran for a month in Inverness. We also produced two more pebble routes, bringing the total up to six, and worked with other geoparks across the Northern Hemisphere to produce a joint geological storyline and digital interactive and virtual rea reality exhibit for our exhibition. But what next? Well, that's entirely up to you. I work for the Geopark and the Geopark is the community. So whatever you think is important is what we have to do. If we want to keep our UNESCO status, we do have a revalidation coming up in 2019. We'll keep working hard to develop our tourism, educational and activity programmes to make sure that we pass scrutiny and show the world what we can do in the Northwest Highlands. 
So why should we care about UNESCO? Have a look at their 17 sustainable goals on their website. Here's the link. It's nothing controversial. UNESCO is the only United Nations agency dedicated to building peace and preventing wars and mitigating natural disasters. The agency's designations are all vig vigorously tested to ensure they comply with the goals of the organisation, but also to ensure that they are of the highest quality possible. This means that funding programmes are slightly easier to access because we're usually meeting the criteria already, but also that visitors know that if they visit, they will be coming to a place that the United Nations have agreed as one of the most special on the planet. So our UNESCO status helps to bring innovation in technology, education and tourism to our region, as well as visitors from all over the world.